guys, how's it going? So I just got done watching the Apple announcement and if you guys were following my tweets, you might know how I sort of felt about it. And obviously it was a smaller announcement and I still had high hopes that they were going to make some announcement with the iPhone 7. As everyone has been telling me, they're like, no, just it's not gonna happen. And guess what? It didn't happen. But what they did announce is a new iPad Pro, a new iPhone SE, which is a four inch iPhone, which I think we already pretty much knew this two months ago. They also announced some new Apple Watch bands and they dropped the price of the Apple Watch to $299. And Tim Cook, of course, kicked off the event talking about the whole Apple security and the government. And then they talked about how Apple is doing all of these amazing things for the environment, which is great, really exciting. But they spent half of the keynote talking about those things and and it was a really short event and they only talked about the Apple Watch for two seconds. Let's just go through. We're gonna be checking out Mac Rumors. Mac Rumors has been one of my favorite sites pretty much honestly since I can even remember. I've been going to this website forever so it's usually my number one go-to for any news. I was following their coverage while I was watching the actual live stream. If you guys didn't watch the event, here's what we're gonna go through. So they started off the event with sort of a kind of a cool little mashup video video of a little celebration of Apple turning 40 on April 1st. So it was a 40 second video of Apple's 40th birthday. So they went through all these cool things, except it was only text. They could have done something so incredible with trying to recap 40 years of Apple in 40 seconds. Hopefully they'll have something really cool for us on April 1st because it really, really could have been something awesome that they could have done with that. I'm really tired, I'm not gonna lie. I just got back from Miami. So Tim was talking about the ongoing FBI ordeal that's going on with the government. And he said it is important for Americans to join the conversation and Apple is grateful for the overwhelming support that is received from customers around the world. And it's not only customers, they are also getting so much amazing feedback from bigger companies who are also supporting their decision. So that's what Tim led it off with and then they went into talking about the environment. One of the cool things they talked about is Liam is this little guy right here and they showed how he deconstructs the iPhones when you turn them into their recycling program. I tweeted that I was hoping that there was gonna be a Liam consumer version that they could come and help me recycle things in my house and clean my house for me. So Apple, you might wanna consider that. Next up, they started talking about CareKit and this is a framework for developers to build apps that empower people to take an active role in their care. So basically what that means is they're releasing a developer kit that will allow people to create applications on top of iOS to help create apps for the healthcare community. They also showed a really cool video that kind of showed how people are using these applications and how it's changing the healthcare as we know it. One of the things that I've been looking forward to this entire announcement was the announcement of some new Apple Watch bands. So here they are. I'm not sure if this pink is a new color, but I think it is and it's pretty beautiful. The woven nylon ones are the pretty much were the highlight of the announcement. They come in the gold red, got a royal blue, pink, love it, pearl, scoop of blue, and a black woven nylon. They also have now a black version of the Milanese Loop, and this is probably one of my favorite watch bands ever. It really is perfect. It's lightweight, and it just kind of folds over very nicely, and it's very comfortable to wear on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm actually wearing a third-party Apple Watch band. This is the first one that I've ever even sort of investigated, and my friend got me this for my birthday, and it's a rose gold, so it matches sort of the rose gold aluminum face pretty perfectly, so I've been wearing that and I love it. I've yet to really sort of get into any of the third party watch bands. If you guys have any recommendations, be sure to leave those in the comments because I would like to check those out. So those are some of the new Apple Watch bands. I like that they finally have the link bracelets available to purchase, except that's really expensive for a watch band. So beginning today, they also dropped the price to $2.99 for Apple Watches. And that was really it. Let's look at the time that Tim came on stage. 10.25, 10.27. It was literally two minutes of Apple Watch talk. Apple TV was up next, ran through some of the new features. So it looks like there's dictation, Siri for App Store, iCloud photo sharing, live photos folders. Then what we've all been waiting for is Apple introducing the new iPhone SE. It looks 
just like the iPhone 5. But with the introduction of the new rose gold, which looks fantastic. That 12 megapixel eyesight camera, true tone flash, which is the dual flash that'll kind of adjust to different lighting, which is pretty important if you ask me, if you're taking pictures with any flashes. Incredible battery improvements. LTE is faster, Wi-Fi calling, Bluetooth. The iPhone SE pricing starts at $399 for the 16 gigabyte. So basically, this new small tiny iPhone SE is quite powerful. But here's what I am asking you guys. Do you want a smaller iPhone? Because once you actually use a bigger phone and then you go back to using one of the smaller ones, my eye can't see it. So let me know in the comments below what you guys think about Apple announcing a smaller phone. Not only did they announce a smaller phone, they also announced a smaller iPad. So what I feel like the trend is at this whole entire event was, guys, guess what? Do you remember when we made all of these big things? Big things? Like the massive iPad and your massive phone? we think you might want something a little bit smaller. So let's go back, and they went back. So we've got a smaller phone, we've also got a smaller iPad Pro, which is up next. But one of the things that I do like about the new iOS 9.3 feature is the night shift. There's a really great chance that before bed, you are on your phone, and they have been doing studies that shows that the blue light actually makes you have trouble falling asleep. So people that may have trouble falling asleep, it could be because you're on your phone before you're going to sleep. So because of the lighting studies, they do offer this feature, night shift, so it can tell that when the sun is actually starting to set in whatever time zone you happen to be in with your iPhone, the lighting on your iOS device will adjust to be a little bit warmer. iOS 9.3 is actually available for everyone beginning today, so that's quite exciting. I've already started refreshing my phone to see if it's working, and let's see. Not out yet. So Phil Schiller is now on stage. He's chatting about the 9.7 inch iPad Pro. Apple says it sold over 200 million 9.7 iPads to date. Cool, well, it's because it's it really actually is the perfect size. Like this is perfect. This is a computer. <laughs> Although I'm not gonna lie, this is a really fantastic device. I do love the iPad Pro. I wish I was a better illustrator. I am not, but it is pretty awesome to be able to just be able to draw on your device. With that being said, this is a video all about Apple, but I recently got a Microsoft Surface Book and it's everything that Apple should have done. It kind of actually breaks my heart a little bit to say it. It's a tablet when you want it to be a tablet. It's a computer when you want it to be a computer. One of the things that Apple said in this event, it felt like they were really attacking the PC market. They were wanting the new iPad Pros to replace your old PCs. Here's the problem I have with that. iPad and iOS could potentially be a replacement for most people, but for everyone, I don't think it can be yet. It's not a full operating system. I can't run the things that I want to run on it that I run on OS X when it could potentially be fast enough, but the OS is still simplified. What the Microsoft Surface has done is absolutely incredible because it is a laptop. It is a full featured powered laptop that you can actually detach the device and it'll downgrade the tablet so that it'll be able to adjust for battery settings and it'll basically turn that into a tablet. Attach it back to your computer, it turns it back into a computer. It drives me insane that Apple has not made a touchscreen laptop yet. I realize you want us to buy the iPads, but all I want, man, all I freaking want. Baker, come here, baby. Tell them, all we want, Baker, all we want is a touchscreen laptop. That's what we want. That's what we want, Baker. Right? Come on. You tell them. You tell them we say, we want a touchscreen laptop. Good boy. That's not my dog. Anyway, I still love Apple. They have my heart, but some things just really want to like get me fired up. So going on, Schiller says 600 million PCs in use today that are over five years old. These people could really benefit from an iPad Pro. I sometimes need to take a step back because I know that I am not the average consumer. For most people, all they're doing is email, surfing the web. I am sort of the supercomputer user and I want it to be the best and I want it to be the fastest. I want it to do absolutely everything. Most people do not need that. Most of those people that do have computers that are five years old, a freaking iPad could be potentially just perfect. So what you can do is because this has sort of the smart connectors is you have the keyboard and you just attach this just like so 
and you instantly have pretty much a full featured keyboard. And next up, I'm quite excited about this. So this is a USB camera adapter and an SD card reader. So this will allow you to add a USB port to your iPad Pro. We mentioned for people who are doing podcasts, you'll be able to podcast directly from your iPad Pro. Honestly, it comes down to like, what are you guys looking for? What do you need? What do you need this device for? Are you doing editing? Are you doing photo processing? I mean, I think it is powerful enough, but I think the one thing that is really driving me crazy is the fact that I still cannot update a thumbnail on an iOS device for YouTube. That's seriously, can we just, I'm not sure whose issue this is. Is it YouTube? Is it Google? Is it Apple? Driving me crazy for like 10 years, 10, nine, eight, seven, maybe six years, a long enough time for it to, to be an issue that should have been resolved. So here's the price points of the new iPad. iPad mini 269, iPad Air 2, 399, iPad Pro 590. They should probably just get rid of the iPad Air 2 because there's seriously no reason to even have that anymore iPad Pro 9.7 inch, the iPad Pro 12.9 inch. Tim also closed the event saying that this is probably the last product introduction in the town hall ever because they are going to be moving their campus somewhere else and that's it. It was only an hour long. I was hoping for one more thing, but there wasn't one more thing, so that's all I've got for you. Let me know what you guys think of some of the things that Apple announced today. I know it wasn't a huge announcement. One thing that would have made this announcement really impressive was if they would have announced something that we didn't actually already know. I mean, pretty much everything that they talked about was things that have already been leaked in the past couple of months. I'm looking forward to WWDC. Hopefully they'll make some announcements on the iPhone 7 and also potentially something in the VR space because Apple is really falling behind publicly in the virtual reality space because we don't know anything. So hopefully that's something that they're just keeping super secret because that would be great to have some announcements to see if they can sort of compete with every other VR headset and company that has kind of been popping up in the past five years. So that's that. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments below and I will see you guys in my next video. Look at baby boy Baker in the back seat. Jenna took Maddie, I took Baker and we didn't want them to be in the car together because we weren't sure how the interaction would be.